Okay, so I've gone around my entire car and I've taken my marker and I marked off all the little tiny imperfections that I don't like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my metal glaze and probably a little bit of the plastic honey, add it to it, make a nice creamy, really, really light, fine filler and I'm going to go along and I'm going to touch all of these spots on the car and I'll show you how it goes. So I'm back on the 240Z project, you saw how I applied the Evercoat Featherfill G2. I applied that, I put a guide coat down, I blocked this entire car out with 220 wet. Now I dried it off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash this whole car down with House of Color Post Sanding Cleaner. Once I get that done, I am going to walk all the way around this car and look at every square inch and look for any imperfections. When I see an imperfection, I am going to mark it, probably with a pen, maybe with a marker, maybe with a piece of tape. But I'm gonna make note of it, and then I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna touch up all of those areas with some Evercoat glaze coat. And I'm also going to probably use some thinner to make it even thinner and creamier so it'll lay into all those little tiny crevices because this is going to be very very minor stuff that I'm filling. So first I got myself a small piece of cardboard. I've got my Evercoat metal glaze and I'm going to squeeze some out. Now this has a really nice consistency to it. I don't know as I'm actually really going to need to use the liquid honey but I will add a little bit to it so you can see. So I'll just take, and I need to use such a small amount of this, it's not even, I mean, it's just like, it's kind of like a dab will do you, so to speak. So now I'm going to mix this up with this plastic honey, just to show you. And I mean, look at that, I mean, it makes it nice and just super creamy. So I'm going to add some hardener to this and I'm going to hit my spots. Now you can see the consistency of this. It's nice and super, super creamy. And I'm just going to touch these spots. I actually have to use my glasses because these spots are so tiny, but I like to take care of any problem areas when they are very small. Sometimes when I'm going along, I'll actually notice a spot that I didn't notice the first time around. That's one of the reasons why this bodywork thing is multiple steps because especially if it's a larger car, you just have so many chances on missing a spot. And there it is. That's what I got for this side right here. All set, I'll do the other side. Okay, so that's it for our touch up. Now, once all of this stuff dries, I will just sand it with probably so 220 dry and make sure that all of those pinholes and little divots and stuff are all taken care of and then we'll be ready for another coat of primer. Before I get into that, I want to get my hood fitted, get my hood that I got from my client, take that, take a good look at it, probably rip this paper off, get this hood on there, see how it fits. I might need to mess around with these fenders, I really don't know. But time will tell, but that is part of the process of, you know, making this right. Is It's a whole building block thing. In a perfect world, I would have had that hood a long time ago, but it didn't work out that way. So we just got to roll with it. So stay tuned. Howdy folks, Troy V Twins the V8s. Back on the 240Z project, this is pretty much where I left you off. So in the meantime, I have done a few other things. I pulled the rear lift gate off, I did the whole inside of that and outside of it, and I applied three good coats 
of KD3000 in black to that, and I have that hanging in my storage uh, garage. Along with, right behind you, is the two doors that I removed from the car. I did the whole inside and outside of those. Along, I uh, did all my touch-ups on the outside, and I've got KD3000 on those as well. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the hood, we're gonna remove the cowl, we're gonna touch up these spots on here, and we're gonna get ready to remove these fenders, prime them, We'll put a guide coat on these panels here that have feather fill on them so we can get those ready to sand. And uh, we're going to continue moving on in the project, so let's go. So the first thing I'd like to do before I get into taking any panels off, my fenders are on here. This makes them nice and sturdy because they're bolted on solid. I'm going to get some sandpaper and I'm going to block out all these little areas. I call them acne areas, but they're all my little touch-ups. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some 150 grit long board with a sticky back and I'm going to use it on a small dirt block and I am just going to chase all of these out. So I'm going to get that stuff together and start doing some sanding. So let's go. I'm all prepped up to sand these out. What I've got is a very small dirt block like this. I've got some 180 grit sandpaper. I'm going to sand this all dry and I'm just going to come to my areas and I am just going to sand them pretty lightly because mostly everything that I have that's covered with this material is very, very small imperfections. As a matter of fact, some of them you can see where I circled the area I want to take care of and you can see my magic marker right through the putty. So really, honestly, I'm just going to sand along here and I'm going to get this all smoothed off and then just continue working. As usual, I sand in all different directions to make sure I don't have any type of a groove pattern and I've taken care of blending my areas in, in every direction. This is a little bit softer, flexible pad. Allows me to really blend things in nicely. Whereas this one tends to be the flatter, harder one that maintains my flat areas. So now I have all my spots chased out on my entire fender. I'm gonna move over to the other side. I'll get that all sanded. And then I'll be ready to start disassembling this to get ready to prime, prep and prime the insides of the fenders first, then the outside afterwards. So let's go. Okay, so we're back here on the 240Z project. I pulled the whole nose off of the car and I've got my extensions, my lower balance extensions, and my two little doors that go on top. I'm gonna get these all ready, chase down a couple of spots I need to touch up, and get these primed. In the meantime, I've got my hood that's been feather filled and my cowl that's been feather filled. So what I'll do is I'll prime these and then when I get almost to the end and I got a little bit of my primer left in the, um, in the gun, I'll put a guide coat on the cowl and on the hood. And then these will dry, we'll bring the fenders in, we'll get all the edges and all the little doodads and everything taken care of on those, get those primed on the inside, get it primed on the outside, and then what we have left is just the body. So let's get at it. Okay, so I got all of my extensions, whether they be the fender extensions, headlight extensions, whatever you want to call them, or the uh, lower balance extensions, all prepped up and ready to go. I got my two filler pieces that go up on top of the hood for the battery access and the washer access. And then I've got my hood and my cowl vent panel lying over on the side waiting for some guide coat. So I'm going to mix up some KD3001 and we're going to get this stuff primed.
Okay, so there you have it. So I showed you how my process of sanding the feather fill, touching up all the spots, and then repriming. And in this case, we did all of our extensions. So the next thing we're gonna move into after this, we'll be moving into working this out on the body, getting our final primer on the underside of the body, the engine compartment, inside the body, and then the exterior. Once that's all done, we'll be moving on to paint. So follow the process and you'll see exactly how it's done. I wanna thank you for tuning in. Please like and subscribe and good luck on your project. And if you have any questions, in the comments below, please have a good one.